I want to go live on Twitch because let me see. Let me get that like right there. For some people to get in. I'm here to answer your questions, guys. Hi. How are you? I'm here to answer any questions that you guys have. Hi, 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 hi. Hi. How do you guys like this? Did you purchase it yet? I'm going to be answering your questions that you have on it. And yeah, we can talk about anything. So it's 6.36 now. I'm going to stream until 7 o'clock. And I'll answer all your questions. This is like a group, free group consultation for y'all. Can I please explain what cybersecurity is exactly? You're basically protecting the internet. I think I've said this before in a, a video. You're the police of the internet. You're the detectives of the internet. You're the, you're, you, you catch cyber criminals and stop them from attacking us. How did you land your first cybersecurity role? Well, I landed, oh my God. I landed my first role. I just talked about this on my live. I landed my first role as an um, I actually got that job from knowing somebody in the network. Um, they were working at the National Institutes of Health and they um oh shoot. They were like, oh, we have a opening for um those that are going to school for tech. And that he basically put me on the project to um, dictate who got access to what on the SharePoint site and who didn't get access and what type of access they got. So that was my first cybersecurity um, job. And then my first full-time job was when I became a cybersecurity engineer in 2019. Thank you for purchasing. If you guys have any questions, I'm so happy with the turnout. It looks so good. How do you feel about the chances of someone who has a criminal background getting into cybersecurity? Okay, Bobby. <laughs> okay, let's discuss this. So if you did anything maliciously, I did talk to somebody who uh, got out of jail. This is on LinkedIn. This is one of the reasons why I left LinkedIn because there was guys on there and they were being weird. And this was one of the guys. So he like reached out to me. He got a job in security and he told me about his life and how he had got out of jail. He was in a bunch of stuff. And um, when he got out of jail, he like turned his life around and he got into IT and like IT like saved his life. You know, he was a convict or whatever whatever he was he was in jail for something and it saved his life um and he was work making good money so if you are you stole something from the store or you did something criminally that's not involving like computers in regard to like doing something criminal in regards to technology i don't know that i don't know if that's going to be good for you i don't know if you're going to be it's almost like if you steal something physically out of stores, it's gonna be, or you're like somebody who has a record, you're gonna, it's gonna be hard for you to get a job anywhere because you have this record of like stealing or doing something criminal. So, 
Hi, let's see, I'm interested in governance, risk, and compliance. Any experience with that role? No, but I do know someone that you can get in contact with. Her name is Katia, and I'll, I posted some information about her on my community section. She uh, does a lot, she has, does a lot of help with helping people with the technical, the non-technical side. She helps people with the technical side. I help people with the non I like to, I like to pen test and stuff. Um, is there a way to get into cybersecurity at an entry level without securing degree while in school? Yes, Dimitri. I explained it in this workbook, and I posted the link in here. Um, what page is that? I don't even know what page. One, two, three. This one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, it's on page nine. This one. I give you like a bunch of courses, this free, like websites to learn cybersecurity for free. And then I give you paid courses. And then I give you like a little bonus read at the bottom to know how to network and read and role or this field so yeah purchase the workbook um uh, oh my god y'all have so many questions jesus christ um uh, do you need to know it fundamentals network admin to get into cybersecurity? you do sarah you do i learned networking how to work with cisco routers um thank you dimitri um if you have any questions after you buy it, that's why I'm in here. I'm in here to answer y'all's questions about the book. Um, yes, yeah, so you do need to know networking because if you don't know how to how the network works, how are you going to defend it? So you do need to know that. If you have a cybersecurity degree but no relevant experience in IT, should I start at help desk and try to move up from there? I recommend it. Or you could do like a boot camp. Or what I do recommend people to do is like go and get a... Hey, can you close this window? Actually, I'll close it because they're loud. Okay. <clears throat> um. So yeah, um, you can start at help desk if you want to, like, go ahead and start getting experience in the field. I started at help desk, and um, I learned a lot of how about how to fix computers and stuff. And, but you, yeah, you can start there, but I recommend either doing like a boot camp if you don't want to stay there for long and just hopping into cybersecurity. Um, or you can get hands-on experience through online courses and then getting like a throwaway desktop or laptop and practicing with the course. What has been your experience as a black woman in tech? It's been a journey. Sarah, it's been a journey. It's been a very rewarding journey. It's been a very growing junk journey. Um, I'm here now, like sharing my experience and helping others. So it had its negatives, it had its positives, but it all got me to where I am now to help y'all. Bobby, the best thing to do is to be truthful on your application for employment. I have a record and I work for a major bank. Yes, listen to him. Please be very truthful. Don't lie. Um, they like it better when you. Um, oh yeah, y'all like the video. I only got one like. Like there's there was twenty people in here at one point, and I only got one like. Um, be truthful because I know someone who lied about their like criminal record, and they said if they didn't lie on their application, they probably they. I teach you a little bit here and there. Um, when I first started school, I learned C++. And then like now for that program the, at the school that I went to, they're teaching people Python because you're like very lethal if you know security and programming. You're lethal because you do program as a pen tester. Um, let's see. 
Would you say that you could be entry level? Yes. Um, she and she's very pro helping getting people entry level. Um, she's very good at that. I'm not gonna. I hope anybody get the bad list framework to help people decide what part of cybersecurity they would be skilled at. She uses that, and then I use Google and researching and looking at yourself already, like what you already are good at and determining in your lifestyle, what kind of lifestyle you want to live. I use that. She uses the NIST framework. So if you want to go and look at the NIST framework and work with her, I'll leave her information in the community section. And if you want to work with me, if you have like a certain lifestyle you're trying to meet, if you have a certain salary, you have like, you know, you're trying to get somewhere. I'm your girl. Um, oh, and work-life balance. I'm really good on work-life balance. So I take that in consideration. I take that very seriously. You, I think Dimitri already said he was buying it, but okay. Our job offers easily, or our job offers really offer through networking. Yes, I've been offered a pen testing, a contract pen testing position. Um, from Twitter. Um, I had like 10K followers on one of my Twitter accounts. And it was a Twitter account that I was, you know, using for cybersecurity until I got deactivated. And I explained why I got deactivated on one of my YouTube videos. But um, on that Twitter account, I used to get asked a lot by people to come and work for them, to do contracts for them. Uh, one of them I got paid out. I got paid out a good amount. Networking really helps. Job fairs, events. If you know how to network, you can get jobs. Um, you inspire me. I thank you so much. Will a B? I'm guessing you mean bachelor's in computer science work. Um, you can, yeah, you can get in to cybersecurity if you have the, the right certs. If you get like a security plus, and you do a lot of security work on the side. Uh, you can definitely get in with a computer science degree. You'll be very good actually because if you know how to software, if you know how to program software and security, you are going to be highly valuable. Hey girl, I oh hi Kat oh y'all. This is Katia. If y'all want to go work with her, go work with her. She's really good at helping you find entry level jobs too. She is, okay. Go reach out to Katia. Um, Fox Hunter. No problem. Oh, you guys, I spell my name very weird. And there's a story why my name is spelled like the person that alters the clothes. But instead of like the Y in Taylor, it's spelled with an I. I'm a different kind of Taylor. I'm trying to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> you can be like me when you grow up. I encourage everybody to be there. Being like me is being your best self and following your dreams and getting everything that you want to get done in life done. That's being like me and being a positive person while you do it. Okay. What advice would you give someone? Oh my God, I got another sale. Thank you. Um, what advice would you give someone starting out in cybersecurity on whether they join a red team or a blue team at a company? You're going to be on the blue team unless you are training to be on the red team. I don't see a lot of jobs that are hiring for red teamers unless like you're looking specifically to be a pen tester and attack. Um, but a lot of security jobs, you're going to be blue team and you're going to be defending. Um, so advice, um, if you want to be a red teamer, you need to get red team certs. You need to get penetration testing certs and apply for red team jobs. And if you want to be on blue team, like there's blue team jobs everywhere. So that's what you're, that's what you're going to get in if you 
go in the corporate world. Do you have any certs? I don't have any certs, guys. I have an associate's degree in cybersecurity from Montgomery College. But I will be getting certs this year. Certs. Yep. So that's my specialty because I got in with no certs. I even got in without having a degree. I got my first tech job without even having a degree. Um, what other job searching engines would you recommend? Indeed isn't working. I never liked Indeed because they're phony and they're fake. <laughs> They'll have you fill out all this info and upload upload your resume. Um, I saw someone on Twitter say if your cover letter cover letter is really good, you can get jobs on Indeed. I don't know who the heck is writing cover letters these days unless they're trying to get an internship. But um, Indeed never worked for me. Career Builder works for me. It's still there are still sending me jobs. And Dice. I got my cybersecurity engineer job with Dice. And I also, if you schedule a consultation with me, I'll show y'all how to upload your resume and get constant jobs in your email for jobs. Um, so yeah, Career Builder, Dice, USA Jobs. And I talk about this in my book. Again, if you buy the book, um, it's on page eight, I think that is. I have like what you need to look for when you're looking for a job and three best uh, sites to get entry level jobs. Career Builder, I got a lot of my entry level jobs with Career Builder. And I got my cybersecurity engineer job with Dice. And then USA Jobs, I got my first internship at the National Institutes of Health. Um, you need to post it to purchase your isn't working. It's just taking me back to this live. Whoops. Um, let me try this. Okay, that's the link right there. Let me click on it. Oh, yeah. That should work. Let me know if that works. Um, I'm saving my questions for the podcast. Oh, hi, Joanna. She reached out to me on LinkedIn for the for, to do a podcast. Yeah. We will wait for the podcast. I actually have a podcast. I have a podcast to do with you, and then I'm doing another podcast. Well, it's not a podcast. Somebody's going to be interviewing me on my channel on, for live. So we're doing that right before my birthday. So I'm a busy woman out here. I will be doing a C. Oh, congratulations, Note Curtis. That's awesome, actually. Um, somebody asked me, I don't know if y'all seen in my community center. Somebody asked me to um somebody asked me to be a professor at the American University for Cybersecurity. I was like, no. I am not, but I was honored. That means they think they I know what I'm talking about. I just passed my CCSP. What do you think about cloud security? I think cloud security is great. I think that's a very good um, avenue to go into because we're moving into the cloud and they're paying a lot of money for people who are managing the cloud. I'm currently working in a help desk role and I would say I'm new to the IT world. Do you recommend I focus on learning the help that um, learn what you need to be great at the job and um, exceed at your job, know it for the job. But then like when you go, what I used to do, I would learn what I needed to learn to be great at my job. And then when I went home, I learned I was studying cybersecurity. So while I was in help desk, I was still in school. So I was at my help desk job, I was learning all my tools to the best of my ability. My home, I had to study for tests for cybersecurity. And then when I graduated, um, I would still go home and like study security. So I always tell people, even if you are you don't already have a security job, be studying security on your free time and planning when you, when you wanna leave that job Plan when you want to leave that job, security degree, I mean, a security job, and then keep working on it. Thanks, Katia. 
Thank you. I hope that made sense. Like, I think a lot of people wait until they have a certain ex level of experience and then they try and get the job after they feel like they have everything. Be trying to get the job while you're at that job. If you don't want to be at that job for a certain amount of time or a certain, a long time, be like, okay, I want to leave this job at this day. Okay, let me make a plan, which is why I created this workbook because I basically tell you um, to plan when you're going to get your cert and your studies. And then that way you know how long you're going to be at your job until you get your next job. What's the difference between the red or blue? Red is attacking. Blue is securing. That's basically all that is. Red team is a penetration tester. They're the ones trying to get in and see what they can exploit. Blue team is the one fighting against the red team and um oh my god can i get rid of them okay they're removed they always comment under my videos with that um Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's basically what it is. And if you guys don't know what purple team is, which I was considering, purple team is like um, the defenders. Okay, they try and stop the red team from coming in. And then you have um, you have purple team, which is like the cheerleaders. They're like helping blue team and the red team. They're like uh, coaching them throughout the whole process. So they're like the middleman. Um, I mean, purple and black handbook, sorry. Oh, the handbook, oh, the pink hand, it's just pink. I just made it pink because I like pink. <laughs> so there's no difference, it's just the color because I know some people, like guys, don't want to walk around with something pink. So I got y'all, I made y'all the black and white version. There's no difference, just the color. Every with um, very little experience and no degree, you need your security plus. With me, I got in without certs because I was going to school and I had a degree. So work every position one to two years. Yes, David is telling y'all some some tips. Um, so yeah, stay at a job, build up, and then try and leave. Um, but I know how to get jobs under a year. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. If they offer more, I get out. Um, what's your ultimate career goal in cybersecurity? What position are you aiming for? My ultimate career goal in cybersecurity, I've actually reached it. I am a freelance cybersecurity professional. Um, I want to ask, like I want to pen test. I want people to come to me and be like, oh, I want you on this project to pen test this app, or I want you on this, I want you to come and pen test my company. I've also gotten pen to ask the pen test and do like a security analysis on a charter school in New Orleans. And they reached out to me because they knew I was from Louisiana. So I want to be able to like fly out and like uh, manage people's uh, cyber audits and like, or do cyber audits on their cybersecurity, help them implement processes and procedures and um, help them like install their tools and run their tools and give them like a whole cybersecurity plan. I just want to like basically dictate how they gonna run their security in their companies. So yeah, that's my goal. That's my position. Oh, and I really, I just want to be a pen tester. I really want to be, want to be like a part-time bug bounty hunter. So I want to just like do bug bounties for fun, you know, and get paid for it. Um, can I marry you once I get my associates? I'm already married. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm already married. Most helpful things learned in college. 
most helpful things I learned in college was how to network. Um, I learned how to um, how to stick to like a curriculum, which a lot of people don't understand that college helps you do. College helps you to plan out because that's how I learned how to plan out how I was going to get a job. Your degree program, if you know how to keep on track with that and graduate on time, that helps you like plan out any. So yeah, networking, staying on task and um, just tech in general, like uh, learning the basic concepts of the IT field. Um, yes, I am already taken guys. <laughs> I am happily taken. <laughs> um, what do you consider entry level pay? What and what credentials would you advise someone who make who wants to make six figures? Entry level pay, the least you can make in cybersecurity is like 60K. That's like the base um, entry level salary. And then up from there, um, the sky is the limit. And credentials to advise someone to make, let's see, security plus. Security plus, you can get six figures. Um, what's the other services you can get? There's like, there's other services, cybersecurity, um, that CompTIA has, they have like the cybersecurity analysis cert. They have the, um, CISSP. They're always looking for CISSP at companies. They look for the, I think it's, what's that? It's like G, G, P, G, P, E, C, something like that. And what's the other cert that they look for that they always have? Like SANS certs. They always look for SANS because SANS is very reputable. Um, but they'll tell you, like, go, I tell you in this book, like, um, yes, G I A D. Yes, C I S S P, C Y S A, and they'll tell you, like, go look at the job descriptions and don't look at job descriptions that don't tell you what salary they're giving you because they're a sham because they're trying to like um they're trying to dupe you on the salary you're supposed to get if they don't have the salary in the job description do not don't look at them okay look at this if they have it look at them and then look what um look at what certs that they're looking for they'll tell you have you thought about freelancing and providing vulnerability scans to different companies' networks for your tech service? I have, David. I want to do that. That's coming very soon. Where is my Louisiana accent? It's gone. I don't have it no more. <laughs> what do you think of Microsoft Technology Associate Certs? Is it worth it? Um, I haven't actually heard of that cert or those certs. I'm gonna have to look into that. Um, are you still in the DC region? I think you should set up a group info sessions or meetings. I am, and I've been thinking about it. Are you guys interested in that? I was gonna turn like digital. If you guys don't know what digital empire is, that was gonna be like my little group underneath um, digital empress. Like the digital empire is like my my group. So I was thinking about calling my group meetups the digital empire meetup. Um specifically what topics in cybersecurity that you learn in cybersecurity carry over the most? Help desk, networking, um defense and countermeasures that all of my classes basically helped me when people seen my degree program and what they were teaching me they were like oh she's learning everything like they had me learning everything from beginner to all the way to like engineer level my degree program as an associate was very good um yes always negotiate your salary 
they will lowball the heck out of you. And I've been lowballed before a few times. Um, negotiate your salary because especially with them contracting companies, they will try and get you, get over and pay you pennies. Y'all know the cybersecurity field like to pay people pennies for like five years of experience in a CISSP. With five years in a cert, a high level cert. No. Is a cybersecurity job interview like programming interview with the board problems? No. It, I, it, I haven't had that, but it just depends on, I had that for an, a system administration inter, uh, interview with the government. They did like a, they drew like a network segment on the board and I had to like name the parts of the network, but it wasn't that bad. They were just showing me something to give me like an idea. Um, but no, it's programming is completely different than cybersecurity y'all. Like, you're not going to be doing the same things that you do as programming that you do in cybersecurity. We're totally two different sectors of tech. And a lot of people ask me like, oh, is computer science get me into cybersecurity? Like, they're two different things, y'all. They're two different things. Cyber computer science programming is programming. You're going to be coding. Cybersecurity, you're going to be analyzing, uh, defending, and um protecting you're not you're really not going to be coding um mtas or uses is that the microsoft tech associates is what you're talking about david microsoft just scrapped it two to three days ago <laughs> oh do you guys know about the google um have any of you taken like the Google uh, cert or the Google bootcamp? Google has like a, a tech support bootcamp that's been like grammar. How did you switch like that? Were they in need of like somebody in that position? Oh, I need to come to one if you do. I'm in the DMV. Oh, yes, Katia, we got me because me and you, we up there. We up there, girl. Is it worth getting your master's degree? Okay, <laughs> here's my here's my opinion on getting degrees in the tech industry. If you, depending on the company that you want to work for and how high you want to go, and if you want to go into the government, the government is very big on degrees because they use that as a determining factor of how they pay you and where though run everything yes a master's is going to help you become a big dog but if you're not trying to be become a big dog and like run masters. um how valuable um it's only valuable if you want to go into the government to be honest um but if you're not going into the government you don't need a security clearance Yes, Katia is really good. I'm telling y'all, she's really good with the government security jobs. Go. She is very good with that. Um, David has been a client of mine. He knows his stuff, y'all. David knows his stuff. Y'all can talk to David his stuff. Y'all can talk to David because David... David has come a long way, y'all. Y'all can learn a lot from David. Because David actually wants to be successful in this career. We like people like David in this career. Is, yeah, Google IT Search Bootcamp. They, they can sign up for. Me and Katia are here to help y'all, okay? Me and Katia are like, click tight. I've been on here longer than I was. No more questions, guys. No more questions about the workbook. Have you guys had bought the workbook? 
if you have any questions. Yeah, <laughs> Katia is really good. I love how she uses Bitmojis as like her branding. But yeah, I was printed this out. This is my first day. I did that, y'all. You're welcome. I really wanted to like give y'all an experience of what it's like to be on a consultation call with me. If you wanna, ex if you um, wanna schedule, and what that's gonna be like. Um, and I wanted to give you guys the opportunity to come in here and ask me free questions. So, or ask me any questions that you had about this book that I created, this workbook. I'm so proud of myself. Yes, thank you everybody that's came in, David, Katia, um, everyone else that has given advice. You are highly appreciated. Are you still sponsored? I was never sponsored by Cyberry. I was being a free branded. I was being a free branded brand. They don't have an affiliate program. And I know I made a lot of money at one point. So no, work for ethical hack. Well, not work for, but I'm an affiliate and ambassador for Ethical Hackers Academy because they give me commission for any courses that I'll go on there and buy. And I already got a course on there. We're gonna be going through my penetration testing course. So I can like start learning how to really pin test. Oh, and I'm an ambassador for EC, Camp, Camp, EC Council. I can't speak, EC Council. They have a new program called Code Red. Code Red by EC Council, that's another um, place where they give out cybersecurity certs. And they have like a catalog for the stuff that they have to learn. It's crazy. Y'all gonna know how to hack Android devices and all types of stuff. So I'll give y'all the links to them. Yeah, I'm, I had, they actually, EC Council reached out to me to become an ambassador. I did not reach out to them. With Ethical Hackers Academy, um, they, um, I found them because I was looking for certs and they were like, you could be an affiliate for our company if you want to. And I was like, yeah, sure. So I've sold like, Three or four courses through them already. Let's see. I do have a LinkedIn. I really like your first page about getting rid of fears and doubts. So glad you started the book with that. Yes. Thanks, David. Thank you. David is one of my star pupils. Yes. Um, oh, thank you. So the I started it off with like getting rid of your doubts because I've had a few clients that come to me and they're like, oh, I'm worried about going into interviews and them not thinking that I know what I know or them feeling like they're not good enough for the field. And I'm like, why are you thinking about the negative stuff? Like, you know, if or them saying, or I don't know this enough and I feel like that's gonna be a weakness for me. And I'm like, that's why I started off with that because what, that's why I started off with that because whatever you questionable about, you wanna write it down and then that's what you go and build your skills up around. So when you go into interviews, you're more confident about um, what you're going in there and what they're gonna ask you. So you're not gonna go in there nervous. You're gonna be more confident. And the manifesting your dream life, I did that because a lot of people can get in this field and they do it for the money and they hear it's cool. And they hear like, um, you know, they don't really, they get into it and they're like, oh, I wanna do this, but they don't have any like goals for their personal life. You know, yes, get into cybersecurity, but what else outside of that do you see yourself being what do you see yourself doing? Does cybersecurity align with your overall lifestyle? Because 
some jobs do not take work-life balance seriously. So you could be getting in there and it could be, it can to be. Oh, Fox Hunter, you was a, um, you're a client of mine. Oh, yay. Yes, I do redo resumes as well. So that's something I offer in my services. If you guys want me to redo your resume and get it to be searched more, I do that. Um, hey, I will start doing apprenticeships and I have no experience in the cybersecurity section. Do you think it's a big deal? Um, isn't an apprenticeship like they're going to train you to get those skills? Is this apprenticeship like a cybersecurity apprenticeship? Because I'm pretty sure you would learn what you need to learn. And if they're giving you the opportunity to learn, then I don't think it's a big deal. If you want to get in the help desk, Network Plus, um, for security as well, but also for networking. I was your second client. I'm Jade, and we were following each other on Twitter. Oh, yes. Hi. I do remember that name. You spell it very um, uniquely. So that's how I remember you like that. Okay, so here is Ethical Hackers Academy. Up right. So that's that site. It has so many different courses to learn cybersecurity. There's even a Security Plus uh, course on there. So if you guys want to learn how to pass your security course that you get, and then Code Red, the one that's like really crazy out here by EC Council, that's another one. And I want to do a course with them eventually. So I put these courses in this stuff so y'all can like, refer back to it. And I put some like really acquire hands-on experience without job or schooling. I put um, SOC analysis. That's a good entry level start in security. Two SOC analysis courses, um, become a cybersecurity expert, advanced bundle, and then master level all-in-one bundle course to become a cybersecurity expert. And then the EC Council cybersecurity training platform. So I give you Becoming like a cybersecurity expert um, on the second to last page. And yeah. So yeah, those are the um, platforms that I am an ambassador for now. Yep. So you guys have any more questions? I got 14 lights. Any more questions? No more questions? This is all the questions y'all had? I get these questions all the time. That's why I made this workbook too, because a lot of the, the questions that, um, the questions that y'all are asking me, I get on a daily basis in my DM. So I'm like, let me just create this workbook. Let me create this workbook. And, um, I don't have to keep answering the same questions over and over and over and over again. Thank you, Katia. I'm very proud of you guys too, or, or of you. <laughs> I'm very proud of you too. You do your, you do your thing on LinkedIn. You inspire me to keep putting my stuff out there on LinkedIn. But yeah, y'all have any other questions to ask? Like, no more Q and A's till the books are sold. Yes. No more questions asked until y'all get my book sold out. <laughs> we ain't doing no more Q&As until that book is out. The $10. Let me see how many I got left. Oh, I sold 70. Okay. So we got 30 books left to, to sell. Y'all need the, the link to my book? Share my book, y'all. Run it up. <laughs> Run it up. Here's the link right here.
share it with your friends. Um, do you still work on Kali Linux? I not right now. I haven't, but I do have a VM that I plan on using for when I'm gonna need the VM when I start that course with Eth Ethical Hackers Academy. Um, let me show y'all the course I'm gonna be doing, and I'm gonna be telling y'all about it on here. Um, let me see. They have uh, so many courses I wanted to take on here. One, so I don't get overwhelmed. Um, I'm doing this course right here. Ethical hacking and cybersecurity course, a complete package. Um, yes, I'm going to do um, this course. I'm going to do a lot of that on Twitch and on YouTube as well. So I'll probably do like live Twitch streams on what I'm doing in that course. And in this course, they teach you like the course syllabus. Um, they're going to teach me how to set up an ethical hacking cybersecurity lab, the methodology of ethical hacking and cybersecurity, open, open source intelligence and information gathering, Google hacking database and Google dorks. I have never heard of that. Bug bounty hunting. That's one of the big reasons why I wanted to get into this because they're going to be teaching me bug bounty hunting that. Um, ethical hacking and cybersecurity tools and techniques, Windows password and operating system hacking, um, anonymous call, message and email ethical hacking, account hacking techniques. They're going to be teaching me all this, y'all. Um, all the Kali Linux commands from death to get start. Um, hacking Windows 7, 8, 10, like Black Hat with the Metasploit Extreme Kali Linux, accessing the dark net or the dark web using Tor with anonymous browsing, um, access dark net black market using Tor. See, I don't know about this one though. I don't know about accessing the black market on Tor. I don't need to be doing all that. Um, hiding secret messages using steganography. I already know how to do that, but they're probably gonna teach me something. Um, the art of social engineering and spear phishing digital forensics, and static and dynamic malware analysis and investigation. And, and somewhere in here, it said that, let me see. Oh, this is why I wanted to do this one, because on this course, they're going to teach you how to make a phishing page. So I really want to check that out. So I'm going to be and showing me doing getting all those skills, because it's basically when I what I want to do in my business, like what skills I want to to or services that I want to serve in my pen testing business. I do plan on getting certs. I answered that Splunk, uh, the core certified user. That's like my first one that I want to get from Splunk, and then uh, EJPT. Let me show y'all what EJPT is. The junior penetration tester cert. So I want to get this cert. Look at that right there. I need to watch this. Watch this from this live from the beginning. I'm currently learning about cybersecurity in different fields. Yes, please. We answered some very good questions in here. A lot of good feedback. If you haven't bought my book already, go ahead and buy it. The links in the chat room. Can I pin it? Oh no, I can't. Um, Splunk certain people with those skills next to cloud. Yeah, there's not a lot of people who do Splunk. I know, but Splunk pays a lot. Splunk pays well. So yeah, I'm 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 gonna be doing pen, uh, Splunk and the cybersecurity course next to each other. Yeah, a lot of people are going straight to cloud. Splunk is very useful. I used to use Splunk and CTFs to analyze hacking, like uh, the hackers' logs. Like they had a scenario where the hacker left its um, all its like hacking logs 
from what it was doing in the system. That's what they do in CTFs. They like put you in real world scenarios. And we had to like download the log from the system and put it in Splunk and see how many times they had accessed some certain system on the network. And we had to plug that number and CTF challenge question to get the points. That's how CTFs are. They're like, um, I don't know if any of you guys know what, um, what's that game called? Where you have to go in a room and you have to like find out how to get out the room to get to the next level. That's how CTFs are. They're like, uh, what's that thing called? I've done one before. Let me know if y'all know what I'm talking about. Something room, secret room, lock room. Something room. I forgot. Escape room. Yes, yes, escape rooms. CTFs are like escape rooms, but like the cybersecurity version. It would be cool if they did like a cybersecurity escape room. I've been thinking about that, like running my own like cybersecurity hackers escape room. Wouldn't that be awesome? Like you have to hack to get out the room. Escape rooms, get to you. Or about cloud engineer. Cloud engineer is the top three position for me. Um, so yeah, I'm about to get off here in like five minutes, y'all. I don't even know. I was on here for an hour, but I'm gonna answer questions up until 7:35. Um, my current position, I'm doing cloud now, and I have no certs right now. Oh, Katia, you don't have any certs either. See y'all, y'all can get in with no certs. It's just that if you don't have no degree, um, yeah. Me and Katia ain't got no certs, and we up in this field running it. Running it, baby. That's how we trying to get y'all. Yes, Sarah, you can do it. Katia, oh, yeah. Um, us try to go for someone who, yes, it is. Ali, Ali, I don't know how to say your name. Besides the research I do on my own, would you say Security Plus is it? Yes, it is. That is like the best cert. That's what I highlight up in this book. Um, get that cert if you don't want to go to school um, and you have no experience, you want to get that cert. Sounds like a lot of frustration. Uh, escape rooms can be frustrating. I'll say that, but I think I could get through a cybersecurity escape room. Are you telling her to go for the cloud, like when she wants to break in? A major in computer science focus on cybersecurity or general computer. If you want to get into cybersecurity, go for anything that is focused on cybersecurity. Okay, if you want to just be a programmer, just be just go into general computer science. Okay, because they're going to teach you and in computer science, I know they don't teach them very in depth security, cybersecurity practices. They teach them how to make secure code, and that's it. But if you want to be like, you want to be skilled in both, go into it. If it has cybersecurity in it. But if you just want to be a programmer, just do computer science. That's true. That's true, Katia. I didn't think about it like that. What about A plus or just skip to security plus? Isn't um my cybersecurity professor, my especially my digital forensics professor. My digital forensics professor, he was so cool. He was like the first one that took us onto the dark web in school. We searched up weed on the dark web in school. <laughs> um, he told me, he used to tell me all the time, do not go for my A+. plus." He was like, just go straight for the security plus because if you're trying to get a job, that's what they're looking for. He was like, don't, he was like, skip straight over A plus, skip straight over network. So it just depends on what job you're getting, where you're trying to go, um, and who you talk to, to be honest. Cause all my my security professor professors were like, just skip A plus if you don't want to 
You know, I really want you to get the A plus for a help desk. If you're really trying to be a great help desk professional, get an A plus. Yeah. If you're trying to get in security, skip A plus. If you're trying to get be a, a bomb, a bomb help desk professional, <laughs> you want to be fixing computers for the rest of your life, like some of these men like doing, um, get the A plus. Yes, I'll save this live, guys. I'll save this live. Okay, so I got one more minute, y'all. Y'all hurry up and answer your questions, and then I'm off of here. What weighs more, industry, industry cert, like a CompTIA cert, or like a company cert, like Splunk cert? Um, the CompTIA cert. It depends on the company if they want. If you want to create your own lane like we're doing, we're getting certs where they're helping us with our freelance business. But if if um, if you want to do like get into a certain company, then you have to get the certs that they want you to get. If that makes sense. So if you want to create your own lane and you don't want to be like competing with everybody else in the field, go for certs that not everybody gets. But Yeah. What about malware analysis? What route would you take for that? Um, I would get pen testing certs, to be honest with you. And for you just you have to analyze malware. To mal analyze malware, get cert, get courses. My course that I'm have that I have is going to teach me how to analyze malware. Okay, last question. I'm out. What about Cisco CompTIA networks? Have you heard? Have you said? Have you heard? You said skip that. Cisco. They said get if you want to go into network security and manage networks. A lot of guys that I went to school with got Cisco certs. <laughs> Somebody said fuck Cisco. Cisco is. You have to be interested in networking to do networking. I'm not a network person, but I know the basics. Um, but um, CompTIA Networks, I have heard you said to skip that. I don't understand that second part. Um, when you say create your own lane, are you saying getting search experience that will make you valuable? I said one more question. I'm still in here answering. Um, let's see. When you say create your own lane, are you saying getting search that will make you valuable no matter where you go? Yes, basically. Yes, that's exactly what we're saying. Okay. I'm out, guys. Thanks for tuning in and answering your questions. If you have any more questions for me, um, if you have any more questions for me outside of this, schedule a consultation. I ain't answering no more questions till my book is gone. I got 30 more books left, workbooks left to sell for $10. Um, thank you guys for, yes, thank you so much. Good luck to everybody. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, cold the sack. I'll try and do like a, a high a tutorial on my hair. Just water and gel. Yes. Uh, thank you guys. I will see you in the next YouTube video. Share my workbook.